Exciting news, everyone. Early this morning, Adobe Firefly just lit up another of its AI modules. This one, Recolor Vectors. All right, friends. So here I am inside Adobe Firefly where we now have three functioning modules. We're going to have so many more. Check them out down here. We've got InPainting coming soon, which is just like healing inside Photoshop, but with one big exception, it heals from all over the place, from all kinds of different images, as opposed to just the image that you're working on. We have Extend Image, better known as Outpainting, in the realm of generative AI. We've got 3D to image, so exciting, so much coming, but for now, this guy right here used to say coming soon, now it doesn't. That means you can just click on recolor vectors in order to enter this mode right here. Now, I, I find it helpful to start with the, some inspiration. So a few images, there's probably going to be way more, but check this guy out right here. So it's a cat and a still life surrounding the cat. But notice the prompt. The prompt is included along with blue, purple, and green. Let's just try it out. All you got to do is click. And you're going to see quite a few variations. Actually four, just as we've been seeing inside Firefly in general. Other, uh, other AI systems use this as well. And so notice there's the prompt. Blue, purple, and green. I just want you to see that. I could change that to orange dull yellow and uh violet let's say i don't have to enter you don't have to enter an and we don't need that the conjunction is unnecessary because after all it's going to understand what you want either way anyway notice that we get these four variations you can of course choose to download a variation by the way as an svg file that you can open up inside illustrator and many other applications as well you can copy it if you click right here you can you can copy to the clipboard and then paste it into another application you have the option of shuffling the colors so notice here are the prominent colors that doesn't really do anything clicking on it in other words right now as things stand now does not produce any kind of result but you can shuffle the colors around if you so desire and then if you're just like nah let's just roll the dice and see what it comes up with you can click on refresh right there all right i'm gonna go back so you know i think i've worn out the cat actually i'm gonna go back here by clicking on that arrow and let's try this guy because i just want you to see that in addition, once again, to the artwork, we have different prompts. So the prompts don't have to involve colors. It, it could be this guy, earthy tones, for example, or this guy right here, soft pastels. That sounds like something you would enter. You know, coral reefs, though, is what I'm going to do. Try prompts because it's a fairly abstract art. And once again, if I wanted to try something different, I would just go ahead and click refresh. Now, you're going to want to do this to your own artwork. And the, and the groovy thing here is that for the first time where Firefly is concerned, this is fairly routine with other AI models with, with uh, mid journey and stable diffusion and even Dolly, you can, you can somehow integrate your own stuff, even upload images. This is the first time we've been able to do this inside of firefly so you can either just click this guy upload svg in the top right corner or you can go back uh, a level here go back to the kind of the beginning of this process and you'll see open svg or you can do a drag and drop if you prefer anyway i'm gonna go ahead and open this guy right here colorful fish is what i'm calling it i'll click open and I will then just, well, I got to come up with a prompt, don't you know? Or I can borrow a prompt from, you know, th that's why it would have been so useful if I hadn't gone back. But you know what? I'll just enter colorful reefs because I'll, I'll say plural, in fact, and then generate. So you have to enter some kind of prompt at that point. You don't have to hear if I had uploaded the file at this point, I would already have a prompt. That's why I was hedging just a moment ago. But we get this cool effect right here. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that this specific piece of art comes to us from the Dreamstime Image Library, about which you can learn more in, in the description if you like. But it is a, bit, a very flexible file, of course, because it's vectors. Anyway, 
You know that. So let's say I decide to try a different prompt. Well, I could do that by clicking on the sample prompts right here. They're not actually mushrooms. They are prompts disguised as mushrooms. So I'll go ahead and click on uh, trippy disco lights. So it's just going to enter some other uh, text. Don't you know? Nothing, you know, nothing, nothing too hard. Uh, Terracotta desert, I think might be actually interesting. And turns out it is. That looks absolutely great. And so what I'm going to do at this point, I just want to demonstrate this. This guy's too dark. His belly and stuff. This guy, though, has all kinds of uh, differentiation going on. So I'm going to click on options and I'll just copy this guy. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but if you like what I'm showing you so far, I have more at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash now. And now let's get back to it. Here I am inside Illustrator. Isn't that fun? At which point I've got the layers panel open. So I'm just going to create a new layer by alt or option clicking on a little plus sign down here at the bottom. And I'll call this guy recolor because after all, that's what it is. And I'll change the color to gold. This is the color of the layer. It doesn't have anything to do with the colors of the colors. I just want to paste. Uh, what I copied, so I'll go up to the edit menu and choose the paste command. Nothing, sp I, none of that other stuff, because the alignment's going to be off if you choose paste in front or something like that. So just choose regular old paste or control V, command V on a Mac, of course. And there we have it. I'll, I'll deselect by pressing control shift A. And now notice we've got a different color scheme just like that. Now, Illustrator, I'm just going to say this. Illustrator provides its own feature called Recolor Artwork. But, well, it is fantastic, actually. It, 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 it does make quick work of recoloring. It isn't as flexible as what we're seeing right now. And the reason is it's because you work with actual colors because you have to manually select colors. And you know, some of it's automated, blah, blah, blah. It will be, it'll tell you more if you're interested, just let me know. But the fact of the matter is you can't just enter a prompt. I couldn't have just entered a prompt like terracotta. I couldn't have just clicked on a mushroom, for example. All right, so I hope it's clear this is much easier, more automated, and so forth. All right, let's, let's scroll down a little bit and see what else we have. We have these colors to choose from. Now, these colors are going to be assigned to the prompt, terracotta desert. Remember that. Don't have to. Don't have to remember that. No quiz. And also, it's just going to appear on screen the whole time. I'm going to, but you can add a color tag, such as I'll add this guy. What is this guy? Light purple. Notice that does inform the artwork. All of a sudden, we're taking things over with light purple. And then if I wanted to say, well, how about a little bit of uh, pale gold? Why then, I'm going to get pale gold. And Terracotta Desert is going to start having less and less of an impact. But here's, I'm going to show you something else. I'll turn off pale gold. So we can just focus on light purple for a second. We've got harmonies. Who wants harmonies? You do. Okay, here it comes. Now, imagine, if you will, I really need you to put this in your mind's eye. You've got a circle of color. So all the colors of the rainbow surrounding a circle. That's an easy thing to think of, right? And then they, they start off less saturated in the middle and become more saturated at the outside. Right, just think of that circle of colors. We imagine harmonies. Complementary is where we're going to start off. So our key color is light purple. What's going to be the complementary color? It's going to be the color going the other direction in the circle. So diametrically opposed to, to, to light purple is going to be your bright green. And so we all, we have all kinds of greens and purples going on now. So in in the and the colors are allowed to sort of spin out in different little directions, but they're mostly complementary to each other. Well, imagine if you want to give them a little more room to be spinning out. Why then? I'm not discussing these in order. I'm going to go down to this guy, split complementary, and that's going to allow us to look at that. Now, we're, we're, we're entertaining not only some, some greens, obviously the bright greens, but, but also we're going to make the greens a little bit yellower and we're going to, and we're going to venture off into these sort of orangish browns as well. So we're, we're looking, if you're looking again in your mind's eye, do I have it? You're, you're looking at a Y inside that circle, but a Y that doesn't really, a very narrow Y. Okay. Now, if you want to, uh, let's say you want to tuck things back in. 
then t- go with analogous. All the colors are going to be very similar. They're still spinning around the circle, but not very far. They're just spinning around light purple, so they're going back and forth in the circle. And so as a result, we have things like uh, blue, a little bit of blue coming in, and a little bit of like magenta and pink and that kind of thing as well. So these are analogous colors. They're staying on their own side of the circle. Well, let's, let's, let's let them out. Let's go with triad. Triad is three. Okay, triad and square. Three for triads, four for square is, is what we're saying right here. And so I'm going to go with triad. And this these are going off in three different directions. So we're starting with light purple. And then what are, what are the other directions from there? Well, it's going to be green and it's going to be orange from purple. If we were to, I just want to make this clear. If we were to start with, let's say, blue. That Now, at this point, we're not going to make a heck of a lot of difference by adding azure, but let's get rid of light purple because the first color, the first color tag is going to be the real anchor when you're recoloring the artwork. So I'm going to take light purple off of there. And now we are spinning in a more familiar direction, RGB. Think of it that way. So azure is our blue and then we got our reds and we got our greens because we're going off in a triad we're going off in two other different directions so blues one direction then red and green are the other two if you want to split off now illustrator by the way and the other adobe harmony stuff they call this next thing tetrad but i guess I guess these guys decided, you know what, square makes more sense. It is in four different directions, anchored by whatever color you choose. And so now we're going from blue, we're integrating some reds and and greens and purples. You can see, I think you can recognize colors as well as I can. But I just want you to remember that it's all going to be based on the color you select right here. You're going to have more control that way. So if I select red, for example initially that's not going to make that much difference. It may make like no difference until you turn off that first color azure. And now scarlet becomes the base color and we're going in three different directions based on that. All right. Now you, you may at this point think, okay, Deke, what if I go nuts? And by nuts, I mean, add a gradient Well, that's something you can do. And so I'll just go ahead and scroll up here and I'll upload an SVG file once again. And this is just a matter for you Illustrator users. All you have to do is save a copy and then for the format, choose SVG. And then don't worry about the settings. Just save off the file and it's good to go. And this guy has some gradients, fish with gradients. I'll go ahead and click open. And in a moment, we'll see all the gradients that are available to us. Now, I want you to know that the coral down here is two colors, two different colors in the gradient. So it goes from white, this is important actually, white to a shade of, well, none of these things, but it's it's, it's a shade, kind of a dull shade of green. And then where the background is concerned, it goes from a color, a, a, a light color to a vivid color to black. So three colors in that background gradient, and yet it works out beautifully. Now, let's say I'm just going to get rid of these tags right here so we can see how things work with Terracotta Desert by itself. But I want to try out my own custom prompt, and so I'm going to enter Arizona Painted Desert. Why not? And click generate. You can enter your own favorite prompt. It can be very long or not too long. It can be pretty short. I don't know if you've noticed this in Firefly, those of you who have access to it. Those of you who don't, you will soon. I just I just feel it. But for those of you who do, you may have noticed that it gets grumpy at you sometimes when you when your prompt is too short. But then it just goes ahead and generates something anyway after giving you a message with a sad AI creature. Anyway, it, 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 where where this stuff is concerned, where where recoloring artwork is concerned, or recoloring vectors, sorry, uh, it, it it rarely gives. I you know I've been experiencing it for for all of a few hours now. <laughs> rarely, I haven't seen it have a problem at all. I haven't seen it choke. And by the way, it generates. 
your variations very quickly, especially when I sit here and gas on and on. But notice that we have some really interesting different results. And if you want to see even more interesting different results, why then just go ahead and click refresh. Now, the other thing I want you to notice, I think we've covered everything except this little lever right here, preserve black and white. So we do have blacks and whites inside of this piece of artwork. The bottom of this gradient right here, the background gradient is black. And the top of the coral gradient is white. And then we have white, they're not really strokes. They're just white kind of implied lines around the fish. What if we decide to give that up? What if you don't need to have your blacks and whites anymore? Well, you can just turn that little lever off and oh my gosh, look, I'm that... Couldn't be a better demonstration. All of a sudden, we have way more colors infusing this artwork. So that's just, you know, a preference. Your preference, by the way, not mine. So what per, what do you prefer among these? Oh, this one? Okay, let's try it out. I'll click on Options and choose Copy to Clipboard. And now here I am magically back in Illustrator, and I'm going to add another layer because I don't want to mess up these layers here. So I'll Alt or Option click on a little plus icon, and I'll call this guy Gradients. Why don't I? And I'll change the color. I just, I don't like green. I'll change the color to grass green. That's so much better. Just makes me feel a little more anchored. Anyway, I'll click OK, and then I'll just press Control V. That would be Command V, you Macintosh people, you know that. And I'll press Control or Command Shift A in order to deselect the artwork. Now I want you to know, so I can compare at this point, right? Everything's gonna be aligned because I just centered the paste. And so this is my original artwork. For, for what it's worth, I was telling you about the white tips on the coral and the green down here below where this gradient is concerned. And then in the background, it goes from light blue to vivid blue, I would say, to black. All right, and so now I'll turn that new layer, the recolored layer back on. Oh, it is so sweet, don't you think? I think it looks so good. And let's just go ahead and click on an object. Well, what's interesting about this, and this would be a function of generating the SVG file in the first place, but notice if I click on a fish, because that fish was on its own layer, it's expressed as a group. So you can see that over here on the far left side of the control panel. If you have the properties panel up on screen, you can see that there too. More interesting for our purposes here is if I click on the background, it is also a group. See how interesting that is? <laughs> oh, by, by stark comparison, also a group. No, that's not what I meant to point out. I want to ungroup it so that we can check out the gradients. And so I'll go up to the object menu and choose ungroup. That's the sucker's way. You can press Control shift g Command shift g on the Mac. Then I'll deselect the artwork and I'll click on the coral. And you can see right here that it is a two color gradient. That's the gradient panel that I have up on screen. So we've got this grayish thing that recolor artwork created for me. But of course I don't have to accept that. I can change that to a different color if I'm so, so inclined. And that's gonna be a much more interesting color, I think. And then we have this color right here. So two color gradient, we, we maintain that two color gradient. That's my point. And now I'll click on the background here and you can see that we're maintaining the three color gradient. So everything you do, using the recolor vector module remains in entirely editable inside Illustrator and other vector-based drawing programs. And heck, if you ask me, you could just go ahead and place the thing in InDesign. But I'm it just for just so we have one last thing, just one last hurrah. I'm going to paste in a final prompt right here. Let's try Yellowstone National Park, keeping it domestic where I'm concerned anyway. And we will come, I'm not quite a four corner state, Wyoming, but it's, it's you know, it's, it's our fifth, it's our fifth corner state. And we end up with these fantastic effects right here. And that is how you work with Adobe Firefly's latest module, Recolor Vectors. I can't wait to see more. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. For still more about this exciting new technology, go to my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deek McClellan. This is Deek Now.